I thought it was mutual. Yeah. The Mediterranean Collection. Try with chicken or steak, topped with crumbled feta and creamy tzatziki sauce. I feel better. Me too. Subway, fresh is what we do. Up first at 11 tonight, the pain of terror in Orlando, uniting voices here in our home. More than a thousand people gathered in DuPont Circle tonight in honor of the victims. Now the crowd stood silent as names of those killed were read aloud. And tonight, each seemed to have a really personal and emotional reason for showing up there. They told those reasons to our Richard Reeve. He joins us live in Northwest right now with more. Rich, tell us about tonight. Allison, what an amazing gathering. Look at all these candles, the messages of love. Now, as you guys said, there were hundreds and hundreds of people here in DuPont Circle absolutely filling the place. And here's the central focus right here. See the heart with the candles, a message of love and concern for those in Orlando. Hi, welcome. Would you like to leave your contact information? A time and a place for healing. The overwhelming sense of loss and sadness. At Foundry United Methodist Church, they came one by one. To talk, to provide a safe space for folks to be open, to share any angst. Multicolored ribbons at this dialogue session days after the Orlando shootings. It feels very personal. To see that attacked just feels like a, such an intense violation. We're still hoping that we're going to open our sleepy, pride-filled eye and realize it was all a horrible dream. Meanwhile, at so DuPont Circle... It was not a dream. People died. Hundreds bared their raw emotions. It's the beginning of the healing process. Free hugs. Firm embrace. Uh, hugs. Even a hug so important. Everybody needs That's a hug nice. today. We survived AIDS. We survived, you know, over a million of our brothers and sisters lost then. We will survive this. For 102 seconds, 49 for those who were lost, 53 for the injured, only silence. Expressing their sadness, but also coming together to support the victims and support their family. There were tears of many kinds. So many lives lost. So much healing to be done. See the hopefulness of the world in each other. And look at that sign there. DC loves you, Orlando. And we wanted to show you something else here. Uh, this is a tattoo that a gentleman got. Uh, he used to live in our area. Now he lives in Orlando. This tattoo, it has the pulse emblem there. This is traveling all over the country. Many people are getting this now. You know, one speaker tonight said, you know, we may be D.C., but we are also Orlando. Live in Northwest Washington, Richard Reeve, ABC 7 News. All right, thank you, Rich. A grand jury is going to decide whether to charge the gunman's wife in the nightclub terror attack in Orlando. A U.S. attorney is going to be presenting evidence to determine whether to charge Noor Salman. Now, she has told investigators that she knew her husband was interested in carrying out an attack, but she denied knowing any specific plans. It's going to be a slow process. Investigators still are collecting evidence and trying to establish a timeline for gunman Omar Mateen's actions before the attack. 49 people were killed and many of them remain in the hospital. Hmm. Actually, many other people are in the hospital right now, Allison. Well, Leon, a developing story now. Questions about gun control weighing heavy on many minds tonight. It's been 12 hours since a Connecticut senator right here on the floor there, uh, started to filibuster to force action on gun control. This is another senator who has joined in this filibuster, and along with them, Tim Kaine. Moments ago, an emotional Kaine talked about the Virginia Tech massacre when he was governor. That was the worst day of my life, and it will always be the worst day of my life. Roz Plater is here with us. She's live with the very latest on all of this. Roz? Allison, the filibuster began during debate over an appropriations bill. Now, Democrats are asking for an amendment that would address background checks and the sale of guns to folks who are either on the no-fly or terror watch list. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy led Democrats in that filibuster that began late morning, vowing to keep talking as long as necessary to force the Senate to take action on gun violence, although it's unclear if any measure would pass. Murphy represents the families from the Sandy Hook Elementary School who lost their children in a horrific mass shooting in December 2012. The gun violence prevention group Sandy Hook Promise held a fundraiser in D.C. tonight, and Vice President Biden told the group he will continue to fight for...